At this point, we're set to welcome our distinguished guest from Nigeria's premier institution of higher learning, the University of Ibadan. Good to see you, uh, professors. Of course, Professor Gabriel Sawir Nyutu is the president uh, of the University of Ibadan uh, Alumni Association, and Professor Elsie Adewoye is the immediate past uh, president of the association. Good to have you join us in the studio this morning. Thank you. And congratulations, by the way. <laughs> so, Prof, Professor, and you two, I would like to start with you, of course, being the uh, current president of the Alum Al Alumni Association. Uh, the activities rounded off yesterday, I believe. Uh, tell us about what uh, went down, uh, the significance of this uh, anniversary, the 75th anniversary of your alma mater, and um, what role did the association play yesterday? Thank you very much, and good, and thank you for having you this morning. Um, the University of Ibadan, as you rightly observed, is celebrating its 75th anniversary. And as an alumni association, we wanted to make a point to join the celebration. And so to recall some of the achievements of the university, and then to also highlight some specific areas of need that we might want to be at attention to be drawn to, so that we can still reposition that university for higher degree of excellence, but known for excellence. And so we chose to celebrate it in Lagos. Um, it's part of it's an ongoing thing. And um, we chose Lagos because of the seminar role Lagos had played in the founding of that institution. In 19, the, 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 the legal framework for establishing that school was crafted here in Lagos. The first set of students in 1980 were taken also from Yaba College to Lagos. And of course, the Alumni Association was founded in Lagos. And so we felt we should come here and then reconnect with the past as a way of projecting into the future. And so we, as an Alumni Association, we are very committed to the idea of progress in that university and the search for our excellence. And we call on all alumni worldwide to key into that project. I know a lot of alumni <laughs> from your university. Mm. One notable one, uh, I believe um, this was um, last year, Professor Ozua from the university, I mean, he was from the university. He was uh, a, a, a professor alumnus. of PGA, yeah, alumnus. He donated one million dollars. Mm. He was also, you know, I think he was part of your college, uh, College of Medicine. I That's think he donated it to that college mm -hmm. at this point. Yeah. And, and so for, for me, I know how important it is to have that sort of donation and that sort of camaraderie from your alumni. Mm -hmm. I'd like for you to share with us the relevance of, a, of an alumni. Thank you very much. Um, the alumni, that is the product of a university, should look back to the institution that made them and ensure that things are right. Things don't go bad, and things that need improvement should be done. No alumna, alumnus will want her institution or his institution to go back. You just want to be proud of your institution any day. So the alumni of any institution, if well harnessed, is really a big backbone for every institution in areas of need. I mean, the, the, the establishment should liaise with alumni. Given a list of need, areas where alumni could come in. When a, an institution produced students, they are gone into the world, different aspects of the world. And I'm sure the university or the institution can tap from all these resources. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, Ma. Um, so I believe that there are members of your institution that are currently in government. I think your institution has pro, has given us a Nobel laureate. Mm -hmm. um, and Wale Shoyinka. Yes, Wale uh -huh. Shoyinka. <laughs> a very prominent Nobel laureate. Mm -hmm. But also members of government. Um, mm -hmm. Also 
I believe the current APC chairman, mm -hmm. um, Gandhi J, is a member yes. of your is a member of your yes. alumni association. Yeah. Um, also, the vice presidential candidate for the um, PDP yes. ticket last year, yes. um, Okoa, correct, mm -hmm. was a member of your um, university. So, I was wondering if there anything you're looking for from specific prominent members of the alumni association of the university to help you guys, you know, improve the university association. Thank you. You know, I told you that um, the institution, if um, the, the institution can well harness the benefits of the alumni, it will go a long way to help that institution. You just mentioned a few mm. in prominent places. If the University of Ibadan has issues on any aspect, we can tap from these alumni if they are able to assist. Mm -hmm. That's the benefit. So it's a win-win anytime if alumni is well honest. All right, Professor Hitu, let me come uh, back to you. Um, uh, first, I was hoping that you will um, uh, give us a bit more of detail. I, I like the fact that you made reference to how Lagos was important to how the uh, UI alumni was formed and everything. But in terms of uh, the activities, you know, that culminated in yesterday's event, uh, what were the key things that you uh, did as an alumni? Uh, and two, uh, could you be kind to take us, you know, on the journey of how it all started and uh, the significant milestones that you uh, can point at, you know, in terms of the 75 years uh, of the University of Ibado and the contributions that the Alumni Association has made to it. Thank you very much. Like I did mention earlier, the University of Ibado is clearly a center of excellence and has produced excellent men. And so, we chose to celebrate some of these excellent people who have achieved in various areas of their calling. We, we know of the, we had the most distinguished alumnus, we had world ambassadors, we had uh, different categories of awardees, corporate awardees. We thought we could celebrate them, not just individuals, but celebrate institutions. So yesterday, we had some royal fathers who were honored who have been University of Ibadan graduates. We had some corporate organizations like Providence Bank. We had um, the chairman of APC, like you earlier mentioned, who is a product of UI. He got the alumnus of the year. He has been very passionate about the role of alumni has contributed so tremendously. Dr. Yes, okay. contributed tremendously. These are ways of building bridges across the country. The choice was from east, north, south, and west. And we congregated in the center of excellence here to celebrate excellence. And it was very well attended. Our key players were there from politics, from public sector, and all that, to celebrate these people. Like uh, the IPP has said, it was a fantastic experience. We thought we could do that in showcasing some of these very prominent people to the world, we also draw, we drew attention to the needs of the university in terms of infrastructural development. We, we, the, most of the structures they are aging and are, are not too good and we thought it, they could be uh, improved upon. We thought as they come in and we let it, made it clear to them there could be some degree of needs assessment it's not only us who that will draw the nation's attention to our universities, but the alumni in particular. And now we're also talking about issues of, of, of funding. And so we invited them to take a walk back to their institutions and see what areas they can intervene in terms of funding. So that was the idea behind this thing, to celebrate excellence, but to remind them that they must continue with the excellent tradition. And a good number of them relieved their past experiences there. 
they were all very happy. And so the landmarks, like you said, we from a, a humble university college of Ibadan became a full-fledged university in 1960. We are now a center of excellence, you know, uh, you know, and then most of the admissions are now postgraduate, uh, in fact, university of Ibadan has become a postgraduate college, training people in most Nigerian tertiary institutions. I mean, the, the, the admission policy is almost 40, 60, or 70 in favor of postgraduates. In terms of infrastructure, like I already mentioned, we need to improve on that. But we had outstanding people. Even in politics, we have the current vice president, who is, in fact, that's the Badon's highest person, the, Dr. Kashim Shetima, is, is there. And then we have uh, the secretary of the government, also is an alumnus of Badon, and several ministers. So we, we, we were here to actually celebrate our own and draw the attention to come to the university and assist the university. Fantastic. Mm -hmm. uh, Professor Adewoye, I'll come to you here. I mean, it's nice to hear uh, that you guys had a, a good celebration yesterday. Uh, you know, mm -hmm. you mentioned the fact that some royal Should fathers be, uh, were uh, awarded. It's also mm -hmm. nice to hear some of those dignitaries um, that was mentioned earlier. Adeswa here mentioned Professor Woleshoyinka, Shoyinka, mm -hmm. and we also have uh, APC Chair Ganduje. We, we know that our chairman, Prince Nduka Obaigbena, also as part, as part of your alumni. But I'd like for you to you know, share with us some of that celebration. Who are these royal fathers that were awarded yesterday? Thank you. The royal father, about two of them were awarded um, um, some honors. Um, MDA, worthy ambassador, and most distinguished alumnus. Those are the awards. And they were given this award because of the rules they are playing, they have played concerning the university. Um, the king of Oseliku was there, who is an alumnus of, of um, the university. And then the Olu Kuta, was also awarded a most distinguished alumnus of the university. So those are some royal fathers. Alake had MDA before, but he attended to honor the ceremony. That's truly amazing. I think we're talking about really accomplished, distinguished alumni. And I was wondering if there's any tradition, anything that's specific about the University of Ibadan that makes, that helps you guys succeed in life? And if there's any traditions that you'd like to, you know, retain and teach to the upcoming generations of UI students? Professor Ingito. Thank you very much. <clears throat> there's a lot that Ibadan has impacted in us that we will want the younger ones to continue to imbibe. Uh, as a student at Ibadan, one of the things that impressed me was the method of teaching there, where you begin from known to unknown. That is, they begin with the little that you know and continue to develop and allow you to develop the capacity for independent thought. That has impacted on me and that has continued to. And in Ibadan, there are do's and don'ts. The whole idea of interacting with colleagues across the nation, we build some sense of unity amongst the students. And so we look back to imbibing that as part of our national culture. And then at the University of Ibadan, we were brought up to be gentlemen and ladies. And so the social life was very good and very great. And so in it, we tried to acculturate ourselves to various areas of social structure. That was at the level of teaching. Then there were also issues of diligence and excellence and accountability. We've been trying to do that. And so trying to imbibe in our younger generation. And we hope the university continues to do that, even in the midst of dwindling income or resources. And so the lecturers, they still continue to imbibe 
these attitudes in the younger ones. And so we, we really uh, yearn for the university to continue to play its role. Most of these uh, you know, tertiary universities in the country have drawn most of their staff from the University of Ibadan. Sometimes when we meet, we, we joke. It's not only about UI alone, but we joke about graduates of other universities and say, since Ibadan was the first and has impacted so much, that even if you didn't attend Ibadan, you were probably taught by some Ibadan scholars. And so we embrace each and every one of them. We work on them together. And so even yesterday, a whole lot of people came from different backgrounds, from different universities. They associated with us and they were very happy. So that kind of level of integration and socialization process, which Ibadan imbibes in us, is the kind of thing we want to keep on encouraging our young ones. We want it to continue to grow from strength to strength and to make one excellent university that we can be proud of. All right, Professor Adewoye, let me come back to you. Um, one of the key projects uh, that the uh, association uh, made intervention on last year uh, was the um, uh, two billion, the proposed two billion naira uh, for the cancer diagnostic center, and I'm sure uh, that you played uh, an important role among uh, many other people who are part of that project. Tell us about it. Uh, how much in total were you able to raise, and where are we now uh, on that project? Thank you. Um, we raised that. Um, we wanted to raise that two billion. It was started. Some people con con contributed, but then the federal government had it in its plan to assist um, university college hospital. So at that point, we allowed the federal government to take over, and then whatever comes in through alumni will also be diverted towards it. That's the situation now. But, but do we have a cancer diagnostic, diagnostic center as we speak now? The, the, the full-fledged center? Yes. Uh, no, not yet. Okay. But there's a unit at UCH where yes. this diagnosis, some of these diagnoses are being done. Mm. So the full-fledged center is not yet on board. Do you trust the federal government? <laughs> with, with the proposition, because a lot of people uh, were actually, um, uh, you know, they, they, they keyed into uh, uh, what the alumni was trying to do, and they thought that, you know, raising the two billion, which I'm sure that your alumni uh, will probably be able to do. Uh, OG made a reference to uh, an alumnus of yours that donated a million dollars. That's the kind of a thing that people want to hear, not, mm. um, you know, federal not uh, a federal government, you know, budget this year, next year. Uh, any hope that that center, full-fledged center, yes. uh, will come on stream anytime soon? Yes, there's hope. There's hope. Because um, projects have been handed over from one presidency to the other. And we try to um, develop. We don't cancel whatever a president has established. So there's hope to continue that in this presidency. Whether the federal government has its own plan or not, alumni still has it. Because University College Hospital is a teaching hospital of the University of Ibadan. So we still see it as part of us. All right. All right, Professor Niato, I'll come to you. Um, I'd like to uh, raise the, um, this pertinent question. A lot of people have been asking about the condition of university education. What, in your opinion, would improve the sort of uh, you know, condition that we've seen so far. We've seen uh, you know, the fact that even uh, a lot of uh, university uh, lecturers are not even able to you know, uh, come to school sometimes. They're not you know, um, incentivized. What, in your opinion, besides this uh, donations from alumni and all of that, what, in your opinion, will help to improve the condition of university education? Yes, that question is <clears throat> a very pertinent question. It's a concern of the Alumni Association, but we can only do a little in that respect by sensitizing not only alumni, but the Nigerian people, the Nigerian public. The major concern has always been funding, because people believe if you allow 
sufficient funds to flow to the university, then the university will be able to grow. But of course, of course, government has tried in its own, and government has tried to bring in some processes with which to control the deployment and utilization of soil funds. But it's still, we are still not yet there. And so we are seriously looking towards the direction of how alumni can really, really come in to support the system. It is not easy being a vice chancellor these times around because the economy is the, 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 the high inflationary trend in the system and then the bureaucracy of getting funds come out very quickly. So the bureaucracy, the environment, the economic environment outside, we all be right. We always talk of you know, improving the university. But again, in creating more and more universities, we seem to be making some universities look like provider, providers of social amenities in their communities. They have to provide electricity, they provide water, they provide all kinds of services. And the money is just not enough. The IGR, yes, some have been asked to invest in projects that they can generate funds, income. Yes, as, they are, as much as they are doing that, but would they neglect their primary responsibility of teaching and research, which impacts on the youth who have a greater potential tomorrow? The problems are the factors are actually multifaceted. But we need to come together and, and really try to address the issue of funding and then address the issue of values, changing values. Uh, and in Cork. Of course, the universities are known for that, but sometimes the, the outside environment is having its, its, its greater toll. The globalization is good to a large extent, but of course, it's, it has its own drawbacks, and so we expect that we must embark on some basic transformational values as a people and even as academics to be able to drive the system to a way that we can achieve greater results for our system. Thank you, sir. Um, Professor Adewe, I want to bring it back to you. Um, you know, this issue of values and funding, um, we're seeing a lot of young Nigerians leaving the country to go to places such as the UK and Canada. Do you think there's anything that an alumni association can do to show young students, especially in UI, um, that there is success in remaining in Nigeria? Because I, I imagine that this brain drain that we're seeing is also affecting the university. Thank you. It's, it's really unfortunate that um, there's this brain drain. We, there's very little we can do to stop someone who's made up his mind to leave. But we can also encourage that the things they are saying that look so odd or bad could also be um, improved on. That is one of the major things we're doing as, an, as, an, as a body of alumni. Like, University of Ibadan is old, 75. And the buildings are getting old. We noted that. Alumni noted that um, there was problem with accommodation within the university some time ago. And we got together to build a postgraduate hall of residence for the university. 54 bedroom on suit given to the university, furnished. That is one area. Some postgraduate students may be complaining, oh, this is bad, this is that, we don't have accommodation. But that's a way of solving one of the problems. So we can look into another angle and see what other problem is the university facing that can encourage students to stay, to hold on. If it's accommodation, we can solve it. If it's a library, we can have plans to solve and things like that. So these are little ways which we can look into the problems we have around that we encourage those students to remain. At least those who cannot emigrate will remain and still be uh, satisfied. Mm. All right, on the back of that, Prof, uh, I'd like you to, and I like 
uh, uh, the two of you, please, to speak to uh, this issue. Uh, the uh, 2024 ranking uh, for best universities in the world and in Africa uh, uh, by the Times uh, educational ranking is out, uh, and it puts uh, UI for that of Nigeria in second position uh, after Covenant University and ahead uh, of Futa in Akure. Uh, and I think that that's like a drop because last year I think that UI uh, came first, um, you know, uh, almost at par uh, with uh, Whitwaterstrand in, in South Africa and the other university in Egypt. Uh, what are your thoughts as to the ranking of, the, of, of UI uh, in, 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 in the global ranking? Uh, one of the top 500 in the world. Is that satisfactory? Or do you think that uh, against all odds, uh, even private universities in Nigeria are not doing too badly, as we have seen uh, with the Covenant University? Yeah. <laughs> Professor, do you might want to? <laughs> okay, I was waiting for you to, to talk. Okay. Um, certainly it's not satisfactory. We've always been number one, number one. And nobody comes top and wants to drop. Mm. So we are certainly not satisfied with that. Be that as it may, we have not, the university has not relented her efforts to improve on every aspect or every angle of the system. So we're still working on it. I don't know what brought us down this time around. I am not aware of that. I don't know the specific thing that brought us to number two. But it's all, it has always been number one. And if you ask anybody that comes to the University of Ibadan, either for first degree, postgraduate studies, they will tell you that it's not, it's not an easy place compared to other universities. Because we are extremely thorough to the extent that students will think these people are just too harsh. But it's like trying to bake you well to the extent that by the time you leave this university, you can stand on your own and you can be proud of whatever you do. So that is in a continual state. We have not relented at all. Okay. Yeah, the teachers are still doing their work in spite of the problems that SU is having, in spite of the problem of um, uh, finance or funding that the universities are, are having. Teachers are still, or lecturers are still expected to do their best, and they are doing that. And I'm sure we soon come up. <laughs> right. Professor, you too, I would, I would like your thoughts on that. I can briefly explain yes. the drop. Okay. Because the university is not an island. Mm. It operates within the system. We know we had a high inflationary trade. And then the ranking is also based on a number of factors, yes. a mixture of them. Student excellence, staff excellence, publications, research. levels of research, all the technical components, even mm. the admission spread and the mix of lecturers across the globe. And so when you have a very, I mean, uh, over for the past eight years, eight months or so, ASU was on strike. Not, I mean, these are all part of the indices. The private universities were in, on course. So, and besides ASU being on strike, within this time, how many scholars are coming and going out? If you look at student mix, how many of our students are mixing? Most of the universities, I mean, most of them are going to local places in their, within their communities and not going to the, to, the, to, to the national pool and all that. So if you take a quick look at all those things, and if you have, the, there has been some degree of lethargy to some extent, because some of the, the, the lecturers are still not very happy with the kinds of things that did from the post eight months strike action. And in a situation by where you have to use funds to do research, if the funds are not coming, how do you go and impact the world? So I think this is where the private university have been consistent, have uh, been in funding and been, I mean, it's the consistency level, but our own has been fluctuating. So we can quickly say that the, the general outlook in the national economy uh, has affected the ranking. But we want to get out of that and move beyond that. And this is where we, we as a people have to take proactive actions to fund our universities. Even we can have centers of excellence. If it has become one sort of huge center. We have a Pan-African uh, University campus there. You know, in the last graduation, we graduated about 720 PhDs for the country. 
you know, and uh, that's commendable. In fact, the VC mentioned that that's even the African average that the Badon alone was able to produce. They are working so hard, but then the funding, the remuneration is still a far cry. And so I think that's, that probably explains why the, state, the private university with appropriate transformational values, sometimes the, you know, I think they still do recognize working for, it's not as if they are even better paid, but they are working for the kingdom. And so you can now understand why Covenant will come to so higher. And if we do not imbibe, imbibe those selflessness, that, then we may, may, we may not achieve much. So it's a factor of funding, it's also a factor of values. All right. It's, uh, it's quite, uh, you know, strange to hear that you guys are still talking about funding, despite yes. all the names of the people that, you know, we just <laughs> reeled out, <laughs> Professor Woleshio Inka, <laughs> Ibisiche, Ganduje, just a bit of <laughs> correction, our chairman, Prince Nduka Obaibena, was <laughs> born in Imbadon. He did not attend <laughs> your school. He's not an alumni of the school. He's an alumni of the University of Benin. But, you know, would like to thank you both for uh, joining us on the morning show. And you know, we, are, we will continue to advocate for more funding <laughs> at our university so we don't see this dip <laughs> in right. your ranking yes, next right. time we speak with you. Congratulations again. Thank you very thank much. Thank you very much. All right, thank you, professors.